Cells are the smallest living units of an organism. All cells have three things in common, no matter what type of cell they are. All cells have a cell membrane, which separates the inside of the cell from its environment, cytoplasm, which is a jelly-like fluid, and DNA, which is the cell's genetic material. There are two broad categories of cells. The first category is eukaryotic cells. They have organelles, which include the nucleus and other special parts. Eukaryotic cells are more advanced, complex cells, such as those found in plants and animals. The second category is prokaryotic cells. They don't have a nucleus or membrane-enclosed organelles. They do have genetic material but it's not contained within a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are always one-celled or unicellular organisms, such as bacteria. So what are organelles? Organelle means little organ. Organelles are the specialized parts of a cell that have unique jobs to perform. Let's start with the nucleus, the control center of the cell. The nucleus contains DNA, or genetic material. DNA dictates what the cell is going to do and how it's going to do it. Chromatin is the tangled, spread out form of DNA found inside the nuclear membrane. When a cell is ready to divide, DNA condenses into structures known as chromosomes. The nucleus also contains a nucleolus, which is a structure where ribosomes are made. After ribosomes leave the nucleus, they will have the important job of synthesizing or making proteins. Outside the nucleus, the ribosomes and the rest of the organelles float around in cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance. Ribosomes may wander freely within the cytoplasm or attach to the endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes abbreviated as ER. There are two types of ER. Rough ER has ribosomes attached to it, and smooth ER doesn't have ribosomes attached to it. The endoplasmic reticulum is a membrane-enclosed passageway for transporting materials, such as the proteins synthesized by ribosomes. Proteins and other materials emerge from the endoplasmic reticulum in small vesicles, where the Golgi apparatus, sometimes called the Golgi body, receives them. As proteins move through the Golgi body, they're customized into forms that the cell can use. The Golgi body does this by folding the proteins into usable shapes or adding other materials onto them, such as lipids or carbohydrates. Vacuoles are sac-like structures that store different materials. Here, in this plant cell, the central vacuole stores water. Going back to the animal cell, you will see an organelle called a lysosome. Lysosomes are the garbage collectors that take in damaged or worn out cell parts. They are filled with enzymes that break down this cellular debris. The mitochondrion is an organelle that is the powerhouse for both animal and plant cells. During a process called cellular respiration, the mitochondria make ATP molecules that provide the energy for all of the cell's activities. Cells that need more energy have more mitochondria. Meanwhile, the cell maintains its shape through a cytoskeleton. The cytoskeleton includes the thread-like microfilaments, which are made of protein, and microtubules which are thin, hollow tubes. Some organisms 
such as plants, that are photoautotrophic, meaning they capture sunlight for energy, have cells with an organelle called a chloroplast. The chloroplast is where photosynthesis happens. It's green because it has a green pigment called chlorophyll. Plant cells also have a cell wall outside of their cell membranes that shape, support, and protect the plant cell. Animal cells never have a cell wall. There are many other unique structures that only some cells have. Here are just a few. In humans, for example, the respiratory tract is lined with cells that have cilia. These are microscopic hair-like projections that can move in waves. This feature helps trap inhaled particles in the air and expels them when you cough. Another unique feature in some cells is flagella. Some bacteria have flagella. A flagellum is like a little tail that can help a cell move or propel itself. The only human cell that has a flagellum is a sperm cell. In summary, remember, eukaryotic cells are plant and animal cells with a nucleus and membrane-enclosed organelles, while prokaryotic cells are unicellular organisms without these things. All cells have a cell membrane, cytoplasm, and genetic material. And even though only plant cells have chloroplasts, both plant and animal cells have mitochondria. A plant cell, similarly to an animal cell, contains a cell nucleus, in which genetic material is stored in the form of DNA. Inside the cell nucleus, there is the nucleolus. It is a granular body built of protein and ribonucleic acid, RNA, in which, inter alia, ribosomes are produced. Ribosomes are organelles involved in the synthesis of proteins. Some of them are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Others are freely suspended in the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is a liquid suspension filling the cell, which contains various organelles. One of them is the endoplasmic reticulum. It has the shape of a labyrinth surrounding the nucleus. One part of the ER is called rough and the other smooth endoplasmic reticulum. The Golgi body is the cell repository. The substances produced in it are stored there and then transported to other parts of the cell. Among the more complex organelles are the mitochondria, in which cellular respiration takes place. Their number, size and shape vary depending on the cell type. Each plant cell is surrounded by a cell membrane. It acts as a barrier separating the cell from the external environment. A plant cell also has a number of unique features. The cell wall, which is composed of multiple cellulose layers, is a characteristic feature of a plant cell. Its rigid structure serves as a frame that gives the cell a regular shape. The cell wall protects the cell against water loss, while allowing the flow of various substances from and into the cell. The plant cell can use solar energy as fuel for the production of the organic compounds it needs. This is possible through chloroplasts found in the cell, which are also known as green bodies. These organelles contain chlorophyll, the green pigment enabling the conversion of solar energy into the energy of chemical bonds. Large vacuoles, whose surface often occupies almost the entire cell, are another unique feature of plant cells. Vacuoles can be likened to huge tanks filled with cell sap, containing mainly water and spare substances. These elements of the plant cell closely cooperate together, ensuring the proper functioning of the cell. They are found in all plant cells, 
irrespective of the type of plant. But they are pretty important in grouping or classifying organisms and understanding how they are related. You can learn more about what classification is in the classifying organisms video. Classification attempts to impose a hierarchy on the complex and dynamic variety of life on Earth by describing how different species group together and how related they are to one another or not. Kingdom is the second highest rank below the rank of domain in the sequence of classification. Remember that little rhyme from the classifying organisms video, do keep ponds clean or frogs get sick? Or you might prefer this one, definitely keep plucking chickens or face getting sacked. So now looking at how kingdoms are broken down. In 1969, an American plant ecologist called Robert Whittaker introduced a five kingdoms classification system with the following five kingdoms. Prokaryota, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae and Animalia, which was mainly based upon differences in nutrition. Each kingdom has characteristic features so that an organism can easily be assigned to one of the kingdoms. These characteristics are based on cell walls, whether they are eukaryotic, prokaryotic, and on the way they get nutrition. Starting with animals, also known as animalia. They are eukaryotic, multicellular, and have no cell walls. They develop from blastocyst, which is part of the embryo development. They have both nervous and hormonal control system. They are heterotropic, which means they eat stuff and have a digestive system. They are motile, which means they move. Cell division, which enables growth. This happens in the tissue. Plants of Kingdom Plantae. They are eukaryotic and multicellular like animals. Unlike animals, they do have cell walls with cellulose in. They are autotropic, which means they use photosynthesis to make their own energy from sunlight. Their growth is restricted to meristems, which is layers of dividing cells. They are non-motile, and they have a leaf gas exchange system and are waterproofed. The fungi kingdom are eukaryotes and can be multicellular like animals and plants, but could also be unicellular such as yeast. They have cell walls like plants but have a substance called chitin rather than cellulose. They are heterotropic and saprotropic, meaning they decompose, so they break things down or are parasitic. The body of a fungus is composed of a thin filament called hypha. They secrete enzymes, do external digestion and then absorb the resulting nutrients. The Protoctista kingdom are eukaryote-like animals and plants. They can be unicellular and multicellular, like the fungi. They have cell walls, sometimes with polysaccharides. They are autotropic and heterotropic. And finally, the Prokaryota kingdom. They are unicellular. They lack organelles that are seen in eukaryotes. They are typically really small, about 10 micrometers in size, much too small to see with the human eye. They have cell walls and are autotropic, using photosynthesis and chemosynthesis, without light, and are heterotropic. They divide by binary fission, not mitosis. So from this video, you should know, kingdoms break down into five groups based upon different characteristics, including whether they have cell walls, are eukaryotic or prokaryotic and how they get nutrition.